we are coming to a very interesting place, but we need to be fast. Here we are. Welcome to the Illusion Art Museum. Uh, well, I was born, first of all, uh, 41 years ago in Croatia, and when I was 31, I went for holidays to my parents' place, and I met my future husband. Well, at the moment, first of all, I'm mommy, which is the most important role in my life. I'm a wife of my amazing husband, and also I'm managing director of Illusion Art Museum in Prague doing also coaching as a mental coach and as a life and business coach. Well, I'm managing director of this museum, so I'm taking care about employees, um, uh, I'm taking care about the sales, marketing opportunities, and actually trying to sell this museum as much as I can. We are selling individual tickets, uh, group tickets also. We are also renting out uh, this building, um, uh, organizing some birthday celebrations and just uh, showing to people that uh, what is the art, allowing them to come to see, to be the part of this exhibition also. Is it hard to have your own business here in Prague or in, Czech, in the Czech Republic in general? No, it's, it's really beautiful. First of all, I'm extremely satisfied with the life here in Czech Republic and this amazing, in this amazing city, Prague. Um, just when I was uh, younger, when I was studying um, in Osijek in Croatia, um, I was very often traveling by tram and just I adored this part of the city which was very similar, just one of the parts of the city over there, very similar like Czech Republic, like generally Prague. So I adored first of all to live here. Wheresoever I turn, I see amazing buildings, interesting people and many, many, many opportunities. So life here for me is really amazing and I'm extremely satisfied with that. Yes, Croatian people are pretty loud <laughs> and Czech people are pretty quiet but um, as I said when we moved here my husband traveled a lot and that helps me a lot. Uh, helped me and it's helping me even though nowadays because um, when you live in that society when people around you are really quiet then you are able to hear yourself and in that piece I will never forget um, the first time when I went to Metro I was like shocked and I couldn't believe that they are so quiet, that they read their books, uh, that they were like, um, they didn't talk at all. And it helped me because uh, in a noise you cannot hear yourself, you know, and you just receive information from outside world in the way maybe that you don't want to receive. And all of us, we need some quiet place. So I consider in that time, even Prague, this beautiful, amazing, huge city, is beautiful, quiet place for myself to know better myself, to get known better myself, to uh, understand how do I function, uh, to think. They, they allowed me in this quiet place um, to hear more my thoughts, myself and other people. So since you have uh, the museum, which is intended for tourists, like in general, uh, how did uh, this all this stuff with coronavirus affected your business? Well, it affected a lot uh, because from 800 visitors per day, we uh, came to the situation that museum was closed. After that, we, I would say, we had reopening and again, like we reached around 400 people. But I think that this uh, coronavirus and uh, this lockdown that we had behind us uh, brought us uh, many changes. Uh, changes in a way that we started to think. Uh, we found new ways of approaching our visitors, 
we started more to uh, communicate with our visitors through social media, have done this virtual tour that we had it and decided actually to share with um, all people all around the world. We realized actually that they don't need physically to come to the Prague, to the heart of the Prague, of Old Town Square in this amazing building, but we are able and we want to share part of this museum exhibi exhibition that we have got with them even though they live in Australia, Japan or USA as well. So uh, for our employees and for our management team, I think that it was just something amazing that uh, is going to bring us even more success in the future. How to understand art? Well, as uh, each person is individual and we have got completely each of us different mindset, we have got different thoughts, we have got different emotional system and we behave in a completely different way, we have got different background um, and uh, this is the way that artists, they have got some impression inside of them, they have got some emotion, they have got combination of feeling, thoughts that they want to put in that exhibit, for example. And the same thing is the is with our opinion about that uh, exhibit, for example. Each person has got something different and each person will have a different um, experience once they see that art. For example, in our museum, uh, people who see Charles IV, for example, they are amazed. Uh, they are really happy, they are excited. But on another hand, there are people who don't know anything about Charles IV, they don't know who was he. But, uh, and then in them, there is no emotion because they, they cannot recognize the face, for example. But on the third, for example, uh, there are people who are inspired by uh, being able to see painting of some person who were very important for this country and for Czech Republic. All of us, we are artists and everything what we do is a part of the art. Just we are not taking picture of our meal or uh, we are not taking pictures maybe of something that we have done, but this is just a part of creative work connected with our inside world and that is very important. Because to show to the world something which is very unique, which hasn't done anyone before, I don't think so that many people can do that. So it's really amazing mindset standing behind that. Uh, sometimes uh, some pieces of art look like uh, they have been made by, I don't know, like an, by an amateur or by a child even. You can see some a footprint, for example, or you can see some colors spilled on the paper and still people buy it, still people are ready to spend lots of money, even millions or the, on that. So uh, why do they do it? What's the value of such uh, pieces of art? Um, we sell and we buy emotion because we buy items and we sell items just because of the emotion that we want to have, that we want to feel in that moment. We don't buy a car because of the car. We buy a car because of the feeling of security, etc. So this is the same thing with pieces, with art pieces. So we receive information, there is some painting of some lady, for example, and um, then that information brings us some emotion, some feeling. And if we, if that buyer will feel that feeling, amazing one, he will buy it. Because they have got, artists are, they have got their own messages that they sent through the, this piece of art. But on another hand, also buyers, they create some specific emotion that they feel in that moment. So that is the reason that they're buying. And money is just a tool how to have it. We are giving opportunity to our visitors to express themselves.
This is your emotion wall, so they are sharing their thoughts, their opinion about exhibition. Okay, Lydia, businesswoman, a lawyer, motivational speaker, life coach, model, sportsman, and mother. How do you manage everything just at once? Easy. I would say easy, easy, really extremely easy. I adore life. And all of those roles that I choose, actually, and um, I, I like to do them. I think that the most important is to have a passion and to show passion and to be be the best version of ourselves that we are and I'm trying to do that on a daily basis. In the meantime, I'm trying to have a peace with myself and in those moments when I'm alone with myself, I'm really trying to recharge myself. On another hand, once I'm doing things that I like and all of those things that you mentioned I adore to do, I'm just uh, allowing myself to receive more good energy and after after all, in the evenings, like, I don't feel that I'm tired. If I feel that I'm tired, then I'm thinking about the day that I spent, the ways that I spent, because for sure there was a something that I didn't like and I was doing that. So, where do you get energy for everything? In that love. And love, uh, I adore to spend time with my children. Actually, uh, when I was younger, when I was studying even, when I started to work after um, finalizing my the first faculty, I, um, I thought that I will never be a mother. But then I was just following myself, my emotions, my thoughts, and I behave in that way. Because we have got this um, inside world which is connected with our emotions. We have got our thoughts, and on the other hand, we have got those reactions or physical activities and actions at all. So I'm trying to be in line with myself. Once I'm in line with myself, then all, every job, every project, every minute of that job is really easy and, as I'm saying, with a flow. And how to find uh, what are you in line with? For example, what, is, what have you been made, like, what have you been born for? How to find it? Um, I'm very often uh, um, asking the question, which is the most important, is what do you like? or what did you like to do when you were a child? Because we should every time, once we want to find out the purpose of our life, go to our childhood and find over there uh, some activities that we adore to do. Once we feel that uh, time is just fine, that we are forgetting about the time, uh, that we just create something and we feel good in that, then we know this is a part of our life purpose. Then it's easy actually to connect those small details and everything starts from the small details, from some small actions that seems to be so easy because to live a happy life and to be satisfied, it's really easy. Uh, as a life coach, uh, how do you help people to find what uh, they are looking for in their lives? Well, um, First of all, I choose life coaching um, since psychology is my passion and I was really interested of that uh, all my life from gymnasium where I had only unfortunately one hour of that amazing subject per, uh, per week. But after that I started to read a lot, read more and uh, discover and tried to implement uh, many methods on myself. Um, I tried to ask some answers uh, regarding to my personality, regarding to my habits, regarding to my conscious and subconscious life, I would say, and the way that I feel about myself and about the world around. So um, 
true life coaching I support people and encourage them by pulling up from them the things that they want to do in their life uh, first of all they need to find out what they don't like because this is the first step this is the most important this is a lim limit that you put and that you don't want to go like uh, in that so this is a basic after that I'm trying to find with them um, so to support them actually to find what do they want once they uh, show me what do they want their wishes then we are setting goals and goal is only wish plus date let's try like this you have got some goal that you want to achieve in one year and people very often uh, give up from reaching their goals because they think about 15 step which is going to happen and this is some limit because this limit this uh, information about limit is just information that they heard so we are all the time thinking about the first step okay I'm now for example sitting into the car and what do I need to do in order to reach my job I need to go with my car and then I'm, I'm just thinking about that I'm not thinking about uh, possible car crash uh, crash which happens on the fifth uh, crossroad I'm just driving I'm leaving this moment and that's it and now there are many other opportunities which are happening all the time maybe you will for the first time once you are going to approach this government institution maybe someone will tell you well why don't you call this number and then you're calling that number and then you're meeting some another person who is going to help you assist you or give you some advice which is going to help you so this world is uh, just the world of opportunities. Yes, exactly, exactly. It is, it is. Because uh, very often also, I'm. if you think about Google, we are putting some subject, some word into the Google after even 10 minutes or in one hour. On social media, there is popping up banners about that subject. Why? And the same thing is happening in real life. Uh, from those 2,000 thoughts, we need to choose which one we want to keep in our mind and it's, it's, it's good to write it down or to talk loudly uh, because then we are aware about the thoughts that we have got in that moment if you are writing down then we are aware more about that and if you know exactly what do we want you want a red car with five seats uh, with I don't know some details then you will know where to go and to find it but if you know that you want a car then you need to go to many shops you need to talk to many people but if you know exactly what do you need and what do you want then it's easier then you know relevant people you will not call uh, information but you will know that if you need some, something, uh, something regarding to marketing you will not call marketing expert from that company or marketing manager if you know that you want to pr uh, sell some product you will call some sales uh, sales manager so it's like giving you shorter option to um, reach some goal and uh, I have also read about you that you are a data therapist a data healing therapist what is it uh, um, actually, I will mention that I started to do data healing because uh, I wanted to find uh, a field and touch a field of really some kind of peace. Because I realized that I had got so many thoughts and I became aware of uh, my thoughts uh, and as we know in one hour we have got around 3000 different thoughts which is a little mess. So I needed to make some order in that mess and I wanted to do that. So I started just to meditate uh, on a way uh, that uh, I wanted to be focused on one thing. Uh, actually, I'm a lot not using very often uh, word meditation because people people are afraid of that, I would say, and um, it's they have got different opinions about that. So I'm just uh, using uh, expression um, stage uh, of mind without thoughts. Of course, there are always some thoughts. But at the end, like it helped me a lot um, to have better focus. So if we turn back on one of the questions, how am I managing exactly on that way? Because uh, through meditation, I'm releasing the stress. I'm releasing some emotion that I'm becoming aware of them, like which are not pleasant in that moment. So if I'm going with the children, 
um, to the park, for example, I need to just remove my thoughts about business, about uh, money or about my health, for example, and I really want to be focused to spend some time, quality time with them to be in this precious moment. Uh, uh, can you explain uh, about this meditation process uh, mm -hmm. to the people? Because uh, there is a uh, there is an opinion mm -hmm. in the society that uh, the meditation is a kind of sect. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, something strange, and uh, only some uh, magicians use mm -hmm. it. So <laughs> it's something strange, and people do not believe uh, in this process. They think it's uh, not for them, and it's just. Uh, something really really strange what is it uh, how does it help to uh, a person mm -hmm. and how to meditate what for what are the uh, goals and what are the results of meditation um, every day we go to sleep and we need to um, just relax and lay because of uh, our body it should recover uh, to the stage of the sleeping our body recovers and on the same time as we have got so many thoughts on, in one minute and in one second we should sometimes just uh, relax with those brain activities so this is actually the way that meditation helps just breathe to do not think about anything um, once people go to church they are in a peace and this is actually the main actually message that I'm sending to people and sharing with them that to do not use the word meditation that they are afraid of but just to relax their brain activities so that means that they just can sit or lay just be in some quiet place and this is the most important because nowadays we receive so many information from outside world if you think about the past our parents grandparents and grand grandparents they were on the field in the nature they heard just the birds they saw they were uh, surrounded by those amazing colors in nature but nowadays we have got those smartphones and we receive so many information think about so many colors so many pictures that we see through those social media or generally through um, different application so that is the reason that we should have just relax from all of those information from outside world and allowed actually our thoughts our ideas um, whatsoever is coming from us to go and to release that now when i uh, came for the second time to the museum there was uh, one gentleman uh, asking a um, couple of people outside, majority of them they were Czech except me actually and him, about the legend of John Nepomuk, Nebo Jan Nepomucki. Uh, so I was the only person that uh, I knew that. Actually, I heard that as the first legend once I arrived to the Czech Republic. So I'm really happy that this statue is here. This is one of the statues connected to the Charles Bridge. And uh, he was actually priest and the co confessor of uh, Queen uh, of King uh, of Bohemia, and he didn't want to share the information about uh, her confession to the king. So King was extremely angry, and he drowned him away to the water. So there is this special place on the Charles Bridge, as you know, with the five stars. So once you are going to cross Charles Bridge, you need to put your five fingers on that place on those five stars, make a wish, and it's going to come true. All my friends from Croatia, and uh, once they arrived here, they were calling me after their visit, and they said we need to come back one more time because all our wishes came true. But this guy died for yes, your wishes. Yes. <laughs> okay. How to uh, stay? silent, uh, just to stay uh, calm mm -hmm. in the year uh, of pandemic, in the, this uh, strange time of coronavirus. It's really well, stressful. Uh, yes and no, I would say. Um, for me, it was pretty calming um, period. <laughs> I know that it sounds strange, but really calming period, because um, I didn't need to run to the job. I didn't need to spend two hours in a car. I wanted to wake up and I woke up actually in the time that I, I wanted. Um, I, had, uh, I haven't heard the noise from aircrafts, you know, that I haven't heard noise from cars. And it was really calming period. 
but the most important when we have got the stress as you are mentioning stress is just our reaction on information from outside the world uh, yes we have got those crises that are going to come we have got so many sad stories i would say but i receive them as stories the reason that i use the word information is because word information and those four languages that i use actually in my communication nowadays with the people uh, hasn't got any uh, emotion i would say there is no happiness when you say information there is nothing there is i'm saying this health zero and the way that we will receive that information about statistics about cries about numbers is our way so i think that from my perspective as i said um, it brought me a lot of time to spend with myself um, to do not be busy actually with um, some things that i was doing before and it was really calming period even though numbers are like they are our financial situation changed definitely but what actually do we need at the end we need to live in this moment we need to breathe we need to be happy we need to feel what do we feel and uh, on another hand also we should be grateful for everything what do we have now um, I had many clients that we were talking about um, uh, what do they feel and about the mess that they had and the stress that they feel in this 2020 but at the end um, they have forgotten about the things that they are surrounded uh, they have forgotten about the family and then they started to spend more time with their families with their children with their partners that they were actually running from in years before so I would say that we faced ourselves not Christ, not Corona, but we came into the situation that we couldn't move anything, that anywhere, that we couldn't travel, that we couldn't do things that we planned to do, and we, we, are, we were able to realize who we are. You have got something and you have got everything, and this is uh, knowledge, this is experience, and this question is just an amazing question that I'm asking actually all my clients once we do coaching and it is exactly that if you are going somewhere not knowing language not knowing anyone and um, what would you do and how would you feel because person who has got self-confidence knowing um, which potential has got in himself hard-working not lazy person with lazy behavior I would say they will find a way there is always a way I'm always asking I will ask you now question what would be the first step that you were you are able to make in order to have a document to have a job to have a home to have a food or money uh, to look for it everywhere to call to the, for example, State Department about my documents or something like that, but Great. they will deport me actually. <laughs> uh, this, is the, this is the thing that people think, so um, just try, yes, this is amazing, this is exactly what you, you actually should, you found answering in yourself. Uh, the first steps are the most important and we are all the time thinking about you see now you jumped already on the fifth step because you don't know what this State Department going to say but you will try everything is about trials and our wish and our courage and uh, our will actually to help ourselves 